felt like you were drowning in your planning and stationery supplies. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I joined the 365 freeze last December. I'm going to talk about what it is, why I joined, how it's going, and the things I've learned so far. Hi, I'm Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper. I talk about bullet journaling, creative planning, and some other artsy things in hopes that we can channel our personal power through a system that is unique and yours. Last December, I stumbled upon an Instagram story about this 365 freeze from Holly at Dash of Plans, and I needed to check it out immediately. Uh, I saw that it was a personal challenge to see if she could go a year without buying any more stationery and planning stuff for herself because she wanted to use down her stash and just really um, cut out some of the buying that she was doing. She was inviting everybody else to join her if they wanted and had started a Facebook group. Essentially, everybody was able to set their own rules and as somebody who needs flexible structures, I was all about that. Some people were saying they were gonna try and go the whole year without buying anything. Some people were giving themselves a lower budget and if they didn't use that every month, they would spend that on a high price ticket item that they'd been wanting for a very long time like a you know folio cover or something like that and then other people had you know planned purchases that they were going to make but then you know nothing outside of that for me i just wanted to set a low spend amount because i had gotten a little bit too purchase happy over 2020 i just wanted to experiment with all these different planning styles as if i had changed somehow in the last five years um away from bullet journaling but I just wanted to get more intentional and mindful about the stuff that I was buying and get honest with the stuff that I would actually use. So creating any kind of guideline that would create friction between looking at the site and pressing purchase was going to be helpful for me. So I went and just decided to do like a 20 to $30 budget each month. Um, I didn't really have any planned purchases, but I would replace things because that's something that I was actually using. So replacements are okay. Other people set up like a planner box or something where they put all their like go to hot like level one planner items into this cart. But I was like, that's yet another thing that I am not going to buy just for the sake of participating in this challenge. So no box for me, but I mean, this is kind of like my major planner area, my art area, and I've got, you know, a couple Raskog carts, but wanting to do this because I know that I'm moving in a couple months here and that was looming in the back of my mind at the end of the year last year. And the idea of moving and schlepping all of my planner stuff across town um, really kills me. So <laughs> I wanted to, I want to use things down. I really wanted to get like, okay, these are my clear favorites. And if I remove distraction, I will feel like that there's more joy in this using the stuff that I have. Um, I watched a video recently where somebody was saying how minimizing and purging your belongings is kind of like getting rid of these silent to-do lists where there's these items that you know are around that scream things like make sure you use me or organize me maintain me water me and by removing the stuff that doesn't actually serve you that it actually also decreases the anxiety of hearing all of those silent to-do lists which is very appealing to me <laughs> So it has been three full months that I started doing this and it's going pretty well. I think just even having that guideline in the back of my head plus the very deep motivation and intention about why I'm doing this makes it pretty easy for me to, even when I'm scrolling on someone's sale or shop, I ask myself those questions of like, will I actually use this? Have I used something like this before? Why am I going to start now? And I think one of the tensions that I had about doing this was feeling like, wow, is this going to negatively impact some of these small shops that I love to support? And really trying to think about what other ways I could support those shops, whether it's reposting or uh, re-gifting some of these items to other people to introduce them to that shop. There's other ways to support people without necessarily buying things because that also harms yourself in a way where you're just going to be drowning in a bunch of stuff you don't use. And that's not very nice to planet Earth. <laughs> On social media, I muted some of the groups that I was in for planner things and kept the notifications on for the 365 freeze so that I was hearing the messages of celebration when we didn't buy something. Not going into all these like planner hauls and stuff like that helps me 
detach a little bit from the frenzy of all the sales and all of the consumerism that comes with the planner community. And eventually I actually deleted the Facebook app off of my phone so that I just wasn't compulsively checking it for a whole host of reasons. And honestly, I haven't missed it that much. I might be missing out on some planner conversations, but that's sort of okay with me. Um, Instagram is a whole other story. Uh, similarly, I had lapsed on one of my planner subscription boxes and realized it like two months later. So obviously I wasn't really missing it because it was a lot of stuff that I didn't use very regularly. And I also had canceled another one because it was one of those where I thought I would like it, but didn't use the stuff in it. So just canceled it altogether. I love getting stuff in the mail, but not if it means that it has to sit in this corner of this small room haunting me all the time. I also keep an outbox of stuff that I can keep the, the stuff that I'm purging throughout time. I have a little box that I collect some of those in, and sometimes I do a big D stash or sometimes I donate it to people who are part of this like planner community that I'm in or maybe I'll donate it to some teachers, who knows. Thank it for its service and move on. Sitting here on my treadmill are some of the outboxes that I have. This one's got more like planner stuff in it and this one's got a bunch of stickers in it. I'm recently going through and purging a bunch of my things because again getting ready to move and wanting to get some of that stuff out of here before I start packing up formally. But having this box has been really nice to just have a place to put stuff into so that I can deal with it at another time. There was also a period of like some major depression that I was going through for a solid month or so that, you know, I shockingly, I didn't buy anything during that time because I was just like, oh, what's the point? So that, for better or for worse, that also contributed to <laughs> the success of my my low spend so far. Every once in a while, I do see like a cute sale going on and I, I click the button, I open up in my browser, I scroll through, and it has gotten much easier for me to look at those things and be like, that's cute, and I don't need to own it. That's nice, and I won't use it, and that's okay. And it's gotten a lot more easy to be honest with myself before I even click purchase, and it just ends up not happening. That's such a, a nice piece of mind that I'm cultivating through doing this, is just like the authenticity to my own planning style, and that if I'm not that kind of a planner, that's okay. I know that this is the thing that works for me, and that's been really nice to kind of go back to the things that I know are gonna be helpful for my system and say no to the things that won't. And a lot of times before, it was like, oh, this looks really cute in other people's photos, and if I'm never using it, will it ever even make it into a photo for me? No. So <laughs> chasing the stuff that was popular was just never going to work out for me and doesn't work out for anybody. And so this um, stepping back and just focusing on the things that I use and do love is really re-energizing and helping me get back into my planner process. So going forward, there's obviously still a major portion of the year left. I think, frankly, this next couple months I'll be too busy to even think about buying anything, but I am a little worried that once I get into a bigger space, I'll have way more empty areas to expand into, and I'm a little worried that I will fill that gap in with stickers. <laughs> <laughs> but what's nice is that like I've got a couple set sticker books, I've got a couple like set container sizes for the things that I already own. And so it's going to be me trying to say, nope, you can't buy another one to expand the collection. Stay within the confines of this structure. Like my washi tape box, I only have one of those recollections washi tape organizers from Michaels, and I am not expanding my washi collection beyond those two shelves. So go me. <laughs> um, and the same thing with my sticker albums. I've got a couple and I'm trying not to get so many stickers that I need to expand into another container just to organize more things that I may or may not use. So I think that's going to help me try to maintain this level of stuff, if not less. So aside from some sheets floating around, this is the extent of my sticker collection. I've got a couple of these Simply Gilded sticker books and I've really enjoyed putting my stuff in here. And over here is a bunch of my other planner stash. I've got some of the planners that I've been using recently up here. I've got that one washi box right there. 
down here I've got a couple different pen sets and more pen sets over here. I'm a calligrapher, right? So I've got a bunch of those. But looking at these, I've got them sorted by different pen type. A lot of these are brush pens, metallics. Got some Crayolas. My highlighters. Acrylographs. Okay, so I'm not showing you this to be an ass. I'm just showing you because I'm. this is one of those things where I think I'm trying to be more honest with myself about what kind of pens I use. Especially when it gets down to the black gel pens. I really enjoy a 0.28 tip these days and it's hard for me to imagine going back to using, you know, 0.5 or 0.7 anymore. And a lot of these are like really pretty, but am I keeping them just because they would be grammable or because they would be things that I would actually use? Welcome to my conundrum. It's a first world problem. I absolutely know that. And I think I'll do another video of the supplies that I've actually been really loving just to show like what supplies have been getting more of the love now that I'm starting to pare stuff down. What about you? Are you interested in doing some kind of a low spend, no spend? Are, are those too many rules for you to follow? I would love to hear down below your own journey with your planner items. I think everybody goes through the same stages where you start off in a frenzy, you buy a bunch of stuff, and then the remorse <laughs> at the end. And then you get to a stage where you are pretty honest with yourself about who you are as a planner and stick to that. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, go ahead and click like, subscribe, share, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.